Thank you for joining me today on Side by Side as we come to the end of our little series on coming alive or fully alive, awakening our senses to the gospel. Today we're thinking about the subject of touch. And I suppose that was one of those things that in this last period of time we have come to miss a great deal or to talk about. We have to stay two metres away from each other. Uh, We're not allowed to shake hands. We must make sure that there's really no contact between people that are outside of their little bubble, as it were. And we we now realise how important touch is. For some people, I know when I go to visit someone on the doorstep, I have to stand back. I can't shake their hand. Or if people come to church, I can't go close to touch them. And touch was really important. Not everybody I know is touchy-feely as we talk about, but just a a simple touch, the shake of a hand, or a shoulder, an arm around the shoulder, or just a little pat, whatever it may be, it conveys something very precious. In Matthew chapter 8, we read of Jesus touching. Let me read you these first four verses just. When Jesus came down from the mountain, a great crowd or great crowds followed him. And behold, a leper came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Within that miracle that we observe there, we see how important it is just that touch and how radical that touch was. Can you imagine it? When someone gets the skin disease identified in, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, we'll see it in Leviticus there, 13, it talks about the rules regarding skin diseases. And, and there were reasons for not having infections passed on, just the same sort of reasons as which we're using today. This idea of distance, staying apart from each other as important to not pass on infections. And then in times when people maybe weren't as aware of the things that were infectious and the things that weren't and why they were infectious, maybe there were extra separations that were involved that maybe weren't always necessary. And so these people who when become lepers or identified as lepers or having a skin disease of this type, they would then be forced to live in isolation or at least in colonies of isolation. And you come across various occasions of colonies of lepers outside the city walls in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And it's in that situation that this man has entered in, and I'm not sure how it came about. You know, he has come down from the mountain. He, it seems to me as though he is outside. He's not in the city because this man would not be in the city. And he's in an opportune place where this man can engage with him. And he kneels down and Jesus reaches out and touches him. That moment, that, that moment of touch, I don't know when this man had ever been touched before since his leprosy had been diagnosed. And had he ever experienced, of course we know that the, the, the nerve endings are affected when leprosy comes and people lose the sense of touch. So therefore that's another aspect. But I'm sure he must have been touched in a way that he felt it. And so it makes you think about the importance of this touch. Jesus' touch is powerful in so many more ways than is identified just here. As a consequence of his his, in, his action, the man was healed, completely healed. He went to the priest to show that he had been healed and that was the way it was, that was the pattern. Jesus never steps outside in an independent way from God's word and God's law. But notice other times when Jesus touches, for example, in uh, Matthew 8, 15, we read there that that Jesus touches Peter's mother-in-law's hand and the fever lifts her. Again, another another moment of healing and sickness. And then in Luke chapter 9 and verse 20, we have the woman who touches the fringe of his garment, which is a demonstration of faith. And in fact, there's a little part there which I had not seen before, but in in, in Luke 14 and 36, it says, as many as touched, as many as touched the fringe were made well. So 
Maybe her story inspires others to touch him. In chapter 9, 29, he touches the eyes of two blind men in Luke 9, and they both receive their sight. We have the touch of faith, haven't we? Because that's what he's talking about here when these people come to him. They touch of faith. It's the touch of reality, isn't it? And then Jesus says in Luke 24, 39, touch me and see. It's an invitation. Discover reality when you touch me. And then when John is writing his first epistle, he says, speaking of Jesus, he describes him in this way, his experience of Jesus. He says, that which we have looked upon and that which we have touched with our hands. And he's going, of course, to emphasize the nature, the human nature of Jesus. He's someone you can touch. Now, you and I can't touch the physical Jesus today, but we really can still reach out by faith. We can still be touched by Jesus, not directly physically, but in ways that will affect us physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And in turn, we can then touch others with love. I think there's such a power in the appropriate touching. We mentioned the arm around his shoulder just to convey maybe a simple thing. I can't put it into words, but this actual physical touch will say more than I could. I think touches is one of those senses that we have been given to assist us to function so well in the physical world. We know that. I mean, consider the last time you went to the dentist. You were frozen up, maybe you got the, the anesthetic, and when you come out, one half of your mouth can't move or it feels it can't move. You, maybe like me, you go around and you say it's time to get a cup of coffee because you were too nervous to have it beforehand and you had no appetite because of the dentist. But you go back, you get your cup of coffee and you think it'll also kind of unfreeze me a little bit as I drink this. But you know what? You slabber, you dribble, you put it all over yourself. You just can't function and it feels so weird. And, you know, that's because you've lost the sense of touch. <clears throat> and think about being in the dark. Now, I know there's a number of senses that are there. There's hearing, there's seeing, and there may even be smelling all involved in that. But touch, negotiating, say, going from upstairs to downstairs, I mean, touch becomes your new form of sight, doesn't it? I know for me, I get hold of the banister and I can feel it all the way down and I know how many steps there are and I can feel the difference between the, the carpet on the last step and the wood on the floor. I know I've landed I mean, even take the idea of laying on of hands, which is a biblical, a biblical pattern, a biblical behavior when we are encouraged to lay hands, not suddenly nor, nor foolishly, but prayerfully and thoughtfully as we lay hands on someone to convey a number of things, engagement, encouragement, contact with that person. And I've had hands laid on me on different occasions, and it's very powerful. You really do sense something that there's an engagement with you in this as well as this. This is like God referring to the hand of God nearly as it were in a symbolic way. Take the Lord's Supper. How tactile it is. Touch reminds us of the physical activity of what Jesus experienced for me. The broken bread, the shed blood. I take something physically. Of course, we can use touch at another level. I mean, I can say, I was touched by what you said or what you did. The effects we have on others can be physical. And doubtless, many of us can testify this, to having a physical reaction, a touching moment, because somebody spoke or prayed or included us or some particular way. How many unnamed people were also touched by the actions of Jesus on the leper, on the blind, and on the sick? Now, the loss of physical touch is a real challenge for us to develop new and meaningful ways I mean, I, haven't, I can't do this elbows. It just isn't, I don't know what that is. And, and I'm not really a keen fan of that. But I think there are other ways. What about writing a letter or a phone call? Those are forms of contacting each other. And they're brilliant way, there are brilliant ways, thoughtful ways or actions that will touch other people so that we can convey concern, love, compassion, encouragement, and understanding. So we need to pray sometimes, don't we? How can we convey these things in meaningful ways when we no longer have the same opportunities for touch? It's something to share. Share your ideas. Pray for how to do it. Who knows, some stimulus for an even better thing is here before us in this time. And we can learn how to touch 
another by the grace of God. And I trust that you will know his touch on your life this weekend.